Welcome back, everybody. You know, I apologize. I know I said I was going to do A1, A2, B1, B2 in that order. But all of a sudden, I look in my video feed, and all of a sudden, I see videos that are A1, A2. And I realize if I get my video out tomorrow, or today, technically, when you're watching this, I will always be behind, and I will always lose that game, no matter how hard and no matter how good I make those videos. I will lose that game. So, in an effort to, you know, try and change things up a little bit, I'm tweaking it a little bit. So, I guess we're doing it Star Wars style. You get B1 and B2 first, and then I'll go back to A1 and A2. I've already finished editing A1, which is mildly annoying, but you know what? Sometimes these things just happen. So, I guess you get to see um, my thought process once it's fully developed and sort of how I really went about clearing all of hard mode. You don't believe me? Here's two clips. Relentless, you survive. There. So right here you can see wall tricks and snow zombies. So, so sector B1 has a lot of snow zombies. And the thing about snow zombies is they heal and they have armor. Which means essentially you're going to use either a lot of genesis weapons or a lot of wall tricking. Because even if you have agility, they sometimes, or I guess technically not sometimes, they tend to hit you a lot. So what you're watching right now is literally me wall tricking two zombies at once. Targeting the exploder and the frozen guy can't hit me, but slowly but surely whittling them down. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using the Uzi especially, not spear, not fist. And there is a very particular reason. If one shot equals one damage, no matter what, spear, fist, regardless, why not pick the fastest possible shooting weapon? And my first thoughts were either minigun or Uzi. And what shoots faster? Well, I'm honestly, I'm not sure, but Uzi you can run away quickly with. So yeah, I picked Uzi and gradually, slowly but surely, but I guess right there, frozen guy, frozen zombie, you too. I'm not kidding in the recording, that was literally five minutes. Okay, so right here, numb zombie plus another frozen guy. I think right here I have to use a Genesis weapon because the numb zombie is on the outside. I think, or yeah, let's, let's use that just to see and ensure that the numb zombie can't heal and then finish off the friend. Ah! And then I believe we're about to get a group room. So, you know what? Just like the PVZ videos, let's do this. Montage. First quick detour because that chest. <laughs> fight these zombies I'm going to talk a little bit so you can see these two rooms with frozen zombies and I'm sure you're wondering ZD why aren't you clearing those two rooms first of all they have frozen zombies so I'm going to need to use Genesis weapons although technically getting cards is the point of this area but there is a very specific reason and quite honestly I think with hard mode you need to target chests above all else because chests tend to I think 90% of the time I've gotten discs if not 100% of the time, I gotta look at my footage again, but I tend to get discs from that crate. Okay, targeting that guy first. But discs are what I mainly target, and then now that every healing zombie is gone, swapping to Uzi. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. So, discs and chests. So, with these side rooms, I'm only pushing the side rooms that really have chests. If I can't see that they have a chest, I will save that room until the sector is clear. Why, you might ask? Well, there's a very particular reason why. Once I finish the sector, I can turn off all the cold stuff, and I can easily run back in the event I die or something like that happens. Okay, this screamer guy is kind of annoying. Whittling it down, slowly but surely. I think it's like 9 every time, right? And almost got it. It's like 20s. This is the annoying part. 
at least with Uzi, it makes it a little bit usable or at least a little bit like realistic time wise. I know LDE made it so like fists can do one damage. So technically, if you are crazy, you could technically clear all of hard mode with fists. Okay, so I apparently do need to use Genesis weapons because this thing is going to heal and then, yeah, it's just going to get all the more frustrating to deal with. So I suppose, yeah, let's just use this weapon, finish it off really quickly, and uh, of course it heals twice. Okay. And right about here, um, with the fan stuff... We have these two zombies we have the exploder and then we have the frozen giants now i've noticed and i don't know if it'll show in this recording but the frozen giants when it hits you it heals ridiculous levels like i think it's 60 70 plus so do not get hit by the frozen giant i would 100 percent wall trick it with uzis yeah so i'm i don't even care if i get hit by the exploder i'm gonna time my hits with this wall trick to the frozen giants um i suppose let's go this in a, a montage form again yes yeah, second montage of the video i know any day now frozen giants any day now oh oh okay it just healed a ton there that is very concerning so much I would cry a little bit, but I think my gun storage is crying more because ultimately that's what it's going to have to come out of. Yeah, so let's keep going. Frozen giant finally down. Okay, so next room I believe is a horde room. So I'm going to put that in the quick slot just to make sure and be ready. Um, yeah, okay, so num zombie, I see that immediately. So use this weapon on the num zombie. Okay, num zombie's gone. And I see juggernaut and frozen zombie. Okay, so I have to use this weapon on the frozen juggernaut and it's hitting there. Okay, so I, I guess I can just run around this room and uh, use the Uzi. I would play some like Benny Hill theme music, but the last time I got YouTube copyrighted. So um, yeah, um, let's see how long this takes actually. And then right here, there's a Juggernaut and a Spore-ish zombie. Or no, that's a Frozen Bloater and a, uh, wait, Juggernaut. Oh, there's three zombies. Okay, I'm apparently dumb. I, I cut this weird. Okay, so, um, yeah, as you can see, I swap out and I have that helmet to protect myself from the Frozen Gas. And that comes in absolute clutch because I can't run back from these fans or I would freeze instantly and die. So right here, I'm using that helmet. So when it shoots that gas stuff, I still survive and I can keep doing this wall trick. Yeah, I ideally would swap to Genesis weapons, but I really need to save. I'm honestly very concerned. I'm not gonna have enough for the B2 boss. Okay, right here, I actually do something 300 IQ right here. So yes, this thing is right there. It's shooting the gas. And uh, anytime now, ZD, care to do your 300 IQ play? I remember doing this. There we go. Power shot it with the Glock, so it goes back behind the wall. Right there. That is 300 IQ, I think. I think, right? You would think? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is going to go on for a little while, and I think I end up cutting the clip because, honestly, it's so much in my recording. So, um, yeah, let's go to that. All right, so fan room, and um, that's a red dot. Okay, so there's definitely still zombies here, and a wave pattern. I feel like this room is so much easier, and of course it's a spear, so I have to use a Genesis weapon. Um, contemplating killing it here. Um, nah, I, I should run out of this room. That is a juggernaut with it. Okay, so um, swip an Uzi to shoot the juggernaut, and then swapping to Genesis weapon to kill the toxic spear. Please do not spit. I'm missing so much, but ugh. In terms of the boss, the, I, of course it spits there, but in terms of the boss, you know what, actually, I, I'm gonna go back to the boss, you'll see me do it in the clip, um, I originally didn't do this in my original run, but you know what, for the video, let's go back, right, Juggernaut, um, well, look at that Uzi damage, okay, it's already down to like 40s, 30s, 20s, and 10s now, and I think it's just one more round, it should do the trick, I keep missing, there we go, Spewer, actually good loot, okay, there's two more rooms one of which i think is a horde room and then i should probably run back so fans right here 
back here. And then that last tile, this reminds me so much of Trial of Hot Rage, if anyone knows that reference. Okay, so this door, yeah, that is a lot of dumb zombies. That's a groaner, frozen zombies is okay. So, um, yeah, swapping to Uzi to do as much damage on that as possible. Can, can we target the right zombie here? Okay, so the rest of them I should try and wall trick. Of course that one's healing. I'm at the absolute corner and okay, I, I have to move. That thing is gonna heal faster and I'm just gonna start missing. That is incredibly annoying and I think I have to waste durability with this. I'd rather not run into the cold rooms. Okay, so that one's down and then um, cheap shot. Okay, uh, or you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go behind the wall apparently. Um, don't even remember when I did my own clip. Okay, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll do it in the uh, cut clip form. All right, so fire and this I believe should be the last room Num zombie and then juggernaut exploder. Okay, so I'm gonna run I think no You know what? I'm gonna stay here because I'm gonna freeze and do something dumb. I have agility So either those misses are me or them I, I kind of freak out when I see that miss but I think the misses are on their front and exploder and just like that, Sector B1 cleared. Now, honestly, Sector B1, um, you know what? Where would I rank it with regard to everything? Now that I've done all the sectors, I'll, I'll do this at the end of these videos. Um, where would I rank Sector B1? I'd say it's probably second most difficult, tied with uh, A2. They're both pretty difficult. It's definitely helpful that we don't need to kill the boss to complete the sector. I will say that.